the question was, how did you start to channel? And you said you were in Sublime Point. Yeah, basically, uh, we were on a camping trip in the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Uh, and the name of the uh, area we went to is called Sublime Point. Uh, so you can imagine how beautiful it is uh, just by the name. And I uh, spontaneously began to receive uh, messages uh, on the North Rim uh, from uh, the Octurians. And also, previous to that, uh, I had uh, been studying the Octurians through a book, uh, a well known book called. Uh, Connect, uh, it's called uh, We the Acturians by Norma Milanovic. Okay. And after I read the first chapter of the book, I put the book down and I immediately started channeling them. I said, I, and I know who these people are and I've been with them before and I started channeling them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you uh, so, feel, how did it feel in your body when you were channeling it first? It just felt real natural because the channeling to me is like somebody's talking to you uh, in your mind telepathically and you begin to uh, speak uh, the, their messages. The, the other thing is that uh, I had been a student of the Kabbalah for many years before then and the Kabbalah has, has talked about uh, channeling. They, they call it in the Kabbalah automatic speaking. Mm. And it, it, it's a well-known procedure in the 16th and 17th centuries uh, with the uh, ancient rabbis where they would do automatic speaking. <clears throat> so uh, I was familiar with the concept. Finally, uh, I uh, had moved to Arizona uh, in the 1987, 88, uh, time period. And I, was very, I lived very close to Sedona. And there was uh, lots of uh, uh, channeling going on in Sedona. Lots, uh, at this time, there was lots of uh, uh, seminars, et cetera, and I attended those. So, you know, I was very uh, familiar with the, the uh, practice. But the, also, I had a lot of support, uh, both from my wife and some other people who encouraged me to continue uh, with this. Uh, and then... Uh, <clears throat> I began to channel lectures uh, and uh, a person contacted me from Ohio and wanted to put together a book of the channeling. And this was in 1995. And that's how the first book got uh, printed and published uh, by this uh, man who uh, wanted to put together the, the channeling. And the name of the first book is Connecting with the Acturians. Wow, that's fantastic. That's this book then that I'm holding in my hand, I'm assuming. Right, that's, a, that, that's right. And the book that you have there in the hand, that's the uh, second edition. The first edition uh, uh, was uh, published, self-published, but then we, my friend and I started this uh, book company and we published it. And then uh, that, that book sold out and then this company called Light Technology, uh, bought the rights to the book and reprinted it. Okay. And the artwork on the cover is my wife's artwork. Yeah, I understood that. And I was reading the first chapters as well. Uh, when she got the picture of the uh, Giuliano and uh, girlfriend or partner or her Well, that's, uh, that's Helio A. That's Helio A. Helio A. And Helio is the Acturian word for holographic. Oh, uh, and, and so um, the, the Helioa uh, is a uh, Acturian guide and colleague of Giuliano. And she focuses uh, more on personal healing work mm -hmm. as opposed to Giuliano is uh, uh, focusing more on general information and knowledge, especially about the Ascension, about planetary healing techniques, uh, and uh, also uh, on how to connect uh, and work with your uh, energy field for the ascension. But Helioa has a, a healing chambers, uh, uh, and she uh, works with people uh, in the healing chambers 
Uh, and uh, it, it's described, it's not described in that book, but in some of my other books and other uh, writings. And, and I have another book that I have prepared, uh, but it's not uh, published at this point, which is devoted just to Helioab and the healing, uh, her healing techniques. Oh, fantastic. That sounds so interesting. I hope you get to publish that book as well. Uh, it, 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 it's it's finished. It's at the publisher. And uh, sometimes it takes a long time for the publisher to actually print, print the book. Uh, but one of the things that Helioa talks about is the, the uh, advanced computer healing techniques that they have. Their oh. computers on the Starship are so advanced that they could or read uh, from your aura, your past life, and uh, they can look at uh, when illnesses began in your energy field. And some, because sometimes the illnesses, according to Hilio, uh, come from past lives, not just from this lifetime, but uh, th there are carryovers from past lifetimes, for example. Wow, that's so interesting. Well, that's what we also uh, kind of, I, fell into studying a shaman uh, class where we also go in and work with the cellular system and go back and find the medicine through time and space. And they say that we also, you know, everything is stored in the cells about eight lifetimes back minimum. Mm -hmm. uh, so then maybe, um, you know, that's very interesting how we can read that. So what about healing from the energy system then? Will that be beneficial for the physical body as well, according to Helio? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, the, uh, she also does uh, energy work. And uh, the theory that she works from is that if you heal the aura, then the uh, aura, uh, the healing from the aura will be downloaded into the physical body. Okay. And so if you... Uh, uh, are trained to uh, let's use the word uh, thought project or bilocate your energy field mm -hmm. to another place, which is really uh, what I call um, visualization, uh, where you visualize uh, your energy field leaving your body. And, and I, I compare it also to astral traveling because we astral travel quite often in our sleep. And the technique of thought projection, Arcturian technique of thought projection, is to take your astral body and thought project it to uh, her healing chambers on her starship. And then she works on the uh, astral body in the starship. And she has several techniques, which include uh, spinning. Spinning is taking the uh, energy field, the aura, and spinning it so that you remove the lower densities in the aura. Hmm. Uh, and then uh, she also will uh, take out, uh, it's almost like pulling weeds uh, out of chakras uh, and, and other uh, blocks and uh, basically purify your energy field. Hmm. Now, it's, it's a little more complicated than what I described, but that's, that's the basic idea. Then, after the energy field is uh, purified, you travel back in return to the body and you must enter your physical body in perfect alignment. Uh, one of the mistakes that people make a lot in astral traveling uh, is not to enter the body in perfect alignment. And uh, so she emphasizes that. And so sometimes people... Uh, in uh, auto accidents or uh, other traumas uh, experience the leaving of their astral body, but then the astral body doesn't re-enter in perfect alignment. So she has a specific exercise we do to re-enter the body in perfect alignment. Then <laughs> with that re-entry, the healing uh, of the aura is downloaded into the physical body. Hmm. That's so interesting because so many people have, you know, car accidents, traumas, even falling on your bike and hitting your head can cause a little bit of trauma and stuff. That's like right. That. Or even, even if you had a bad dream, 
and then the uh, 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 your your uh, astral body leaves and you don't come back in, or uh, after a surgery, that's another thing. If people had a surgery and they, they don't come back into their physical body correctly in the surgery, then th there could be a problem like that also. So uh, th this is something. Now th there there's other uh, uh, healing techniques that have to do with uh, trauma, and she has. Uh, advanced computers and basically think of the uh, everything that's happened to you in this lifetime is stored in memory and the memory is in a in a certain order uh and i don't know if you ever heard of these uh uh secretarial devices called the rolodex have you ever heard of that yeah I actually okay. have. yes okay so a, a rolodex is a, a rotating list of addresses well, uh, uh, picture all of the memories that you have had in this lifetime on a Rolodex. And then say like you were eight years old and then you had a trauma at eight years old. Okay, so then we go uh, on the computer, we go back or she, uh, she leads us back on an exercise and you pull out that card in the Rolodex and then that card comes on a computer with the picture of the trauma. Okay, now here you have the picture of the trauma. Say somebody's beating you up uh, or, or abusing you, physically abusing you, or even sexually abusing you, or it could be anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then you have the picture on the screen. Uh, so in the exercise, we change or modify the picture. Mm. Uh, and so if you had been uh, being abused in, in the picture, now we might have an angel come in, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, stop the the abuser from hurting you. Mm. So that's the so we created a new image, basically. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, now it's more complicated than what I'm saying, but that's the idea. Now, after we work with the uh, person to create the new image uh, on the computer, then we put the picture exactly back in the same place on the Rolodex in your subconscious. And that is the new memory that is now stored in your uh, subconscious. And all of the future events after that uh, are updated. So it's kind of updating all the timelines. That's so interesting. That must be very powerful because I've worked a lot with the subconscious personally on, on my own lifetime. And whenever I have these memories come up, I take the opportunity to work with them at that time. Like I had surgery when I was two. I mm. remember being in the hospital then. I remember trying to use the phone because I told my parents, if you use the phone, you know, we can come and get you. And they had left because at that time, the parents had to leave the hospital. And I remember taking the phone and asking for help, but I just realized actually not so long ago that at two years old, I could probably not speak. Right, I'm surprised a two-year-old could even hold a phone. <laughs> yeah, no, I remember this. I was taking, I mean, I in my memory, you know, these memories like coming up, like though that must be from the subconscious re-remembering or reworking it. And then when I said, oh, well, I was two years old. No wonder they hung up because they could probably not hear me or speak to me. And I had been upset about this for, you know, many years. I'm in my fifties now. And when I went over that memory in my mind and explained to my body, well, I could probably not speak then. So uh, I got help anyway. And, I, you know, then in somehow I could feel my body relaxing or letting go of that memory. Yeah. Imagine well, so that. we don't necessarily, in this technique, we don't necessarily uh, release the memory mm -hmm. as much as we alter the image of the memory Be because everything is stored. Uh, all memories are stored as images. Mm. The image is the uh, communication uh, technique or tool for the subconscious. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, so the subconscious loves images. And e even in dreams, I mean, uh, most of the time people uh, who have dream when, they, we dr when we do dream, you're dreaming in images 
and uh, there, there might be some speaking going on, of course, but it's the images, and the images is the language of the subconscious. And so that's why, you know, in, in the example you just gave, we would, we, you know, to, uh, we might just take that and say, okay, you pick up the phone and you call your mother and she answers the phone and she goes, okay, and then she talks to you and gives you soothing words. And then that's the new image. Because, I love that. and then, then, you know, then that becomes the new image. And then we download it exactly in the same place where the old image was. Interesting. That is a brilliant technique. I can't wait to hear more about that Helios computer. Helio A. Helio, Helio A. A. Okay. Yeah, Helio it's, A. Technique. It, it's technique. spelled H E L I O dash A H. Helio A. Yeah. Helio A. And, and it's called Helio A's Healing Chambers. Very brilliant. Yeah. Because I also had another example where I had uh, kidney problems, you know, and I woke up on the operating table after I'd had my first daughter and I was up in the corner uh, of the room looking down at myself mm -hmm. having the operation. And this is very common. I don't know if it's an NDA, NDE or not, but definitely the memory is still there. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, you know, the only reason I remember <laughs> because they were playing ABBA very loud during the operation. And I said to myself, I'm going to remember this. I'm going to remember this. I made sure I wouldn't forget about it. And then all of a sudden I was back into my body. But who knows how you landed in your body at that time? Right. Right. Okay. And maybe you uh, re entered in, uh, you know, perfect alignment. I don't know. It's I hope so. Well, I better re dream it in the, in the uh, <laughs> shaman way. We talk about re dreaming the reality. Mm. And that's kind of uh, similar to Helios. Helioa. Helioa. Helioa uh, way of doing it with the images for the subconscious. Mm -hmm. Really brilliant. I'm looking forward to reading that book when it comes out. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, a, a lot of people, uh, when they contact me, uh, want to do healing work specifically with Helioa. She also talks about the holographic healing. And uh, holographic healing refers to the fact that we are multidimensional. Yes. And, and therefore, you know, we're just in experiencing a part of our own self in this reality but we're not experiencing the entire self. This is only part of our self. And the, the, we have the middle self and the higher self. And the higher self is uh, uh, often in another dimension. Is that so, the I am presence then? Right, right. <clears throat> and the I am presence uh, is, <clears throat> well, the I am pre uh, is participating in the whole multi-dimensional self. So if you have, let's just say you have three parts of yourself, the lower self, the middle self, and the higher self. But most of your lifetime, you're only experiencing your lower self. If you could, in a healing or even in a shamanistic uh, experience, uh, work with your higher self on a multi-dimensional basis, you can bring parts of your higher self into this reality to help you heal. And that's the holographic self. So in other words, uh, the, the part can access the whole and, the, uh, and then one part can help heal. Uh, a higher part can help heal the lower part. That's incredible. Isn't that what it's meant to do with realization is to bring in the I am presence more into your physical soul body yeah i mean i i I, the, the, I have to be careful about using the word i am presence yeah because it means a lot of different things to many different people you're absolutely and, right and then um th this is really uh, kind of surprising but the the word i am presence began in, uh comes from the hebrew bible where uh moses was at the burning bush and uh when he saw the burning bush, then God revealed his revealed himself to Moses, and then Moses says, "Who who are, who should I say you are?" Mm -hmm. And uh, God gave him the name, "I am that I am." 
-hmm. but but actually in the hebrew correct hebrew translation is i will be that i will be because in a, a biblical hebrew there is no present tense there, therefore i am doesn't is doesn't even exist in in hebrew it's either in in hebrew uh, from the biblical times it's either uh i was or i will be those are the only two uh states there's no present tense hmm. so the actual definition of i am that i am is i will be that i will be and so uh but for some reason and i have a theory when because the hebrew bible was translated into greek and then the uh, greek was translated into latin <laughs> the latin was translated into german and then the german eventually uh, went into english when the king james bible was written so what happened was that it eventually came down into i am yeah. that, I, that i am and sometimes i tell people the correct uh way to look at it is i am that i am i was that i was i will be that i will be it but has a different feeling to it i want to say i will be that i will be yeah how, how does it feel different to you it's interesting it feels like it's more solid in your body as it is at this moment in the now present time yeah i will be I, in other words i will be whatever i will be yeah and, uh, and it like takes off the oof i don't have to change you know i'm perfect or i am that i am at this moment anyway yeah. but i think in, in modern uh new age philosophy the i am presence is your total self mm -hmm. meaning includes the higher self uh, yeah. I, I am that uh, that i am but I, I will be that i will be it was actually uh the god's name that was given and in hebrew it's called ehia asher ehia uh, so that's is, what you say ehia asher ehia the ehia ehia asher ehia Okay, Ehiel, Asher, Ehiel. That no. sounds like angel almost. No, no, it's an Ehiye. Ehiye. Asher. Asher. Ehiye. Ehiye. I could write that in the chat if you want I me to. I love that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. love yeah. Hebrew yeah. because it's very clear, you know? Right, yeah. So that so that was the name that, that God revealed uh to moses at the burning bush because moses says well who should i say you are what should i tell the people who what is your name and god said to uh moses ehia asher ehia uh, that, that's i will be that i will be that's that's one of one of the names but that that's one of the names now instant interestingly when i'm working with the acturians they uh acknowledge uh, one of the names of God that does appear in the uh, Hebrew Bible, the name Adonai, which is uh, also uh, uh, translated as my Lord in English. And the, uh, the, the uh, Octarians are saying that that word Adonai is known in the galaxy as, as, as the name of God. And the, wow. Octarian, the Octarians do uh, acknowledge the existence of Adonai, for example. I love that. I love Adonai. Mm, right for feeling beautiful word right yeah so uh i deny means my 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 lord uh and uh anyway there there are lots of different there's about 10 different names uh of god that are described in the hebrew bible and adonai in ahia asher ahia is uh, are two two names that are uh are described so the one, go ahead so you take uh, healing sessions from people that call in. How can they get in touch with you? Oh, they Thank could you. email me uh, if they wanted to. Uh, and also, if they go to my website, uh, at the top, there's a link that uh, you click that goes into uh, healing sessions with David Miller. Oh, and, that would be great. I would yeah, like to look to that link myself. <laughs> yeah, right. right. So, uh, but but I'm, uh, the other name of God that's very well known, everyone knows, is called Yahweh. Yes. Uh, but but uh that's uh supposedly uh a mispronunciation because the that that name is not pronounced in in the traditional readings of the hebrew bible how do you pronounce it then you, you're supposed to say instead of every time you see the letters of yahweh 
you're supposed to say either Adonai or the name. And the name in Hebrew is Hashem. Hashem. Okay. So because kind of like a salute then? Right. Because uh the 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 four letters that compose Yahweh, Y H V H, is known as the Tetragrammaton. Uh, and, which is the four-letter name of uh, God. And the Tetragrammaton is a Greek uh, word that means the four letters. And so that, that four-letter name is not supposed to be pronounced because it's so sacred. So it, you're supposed to substitute it for the name, my Lord. Oh, right. I yeah, love that, that. That, so you can yeah. just say Adonai instead or Hashem. Or, or Hashem. 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 The, the name, that, but, uh, I, you know... But the, the name Yahweh has become so popular in modern English. You know, it's 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 hard to um, get people uh, to change their understanding of that name. So sometimes I just tell people just do Y H V H, Y H V H, which is the four letter name of God. You can just say Y H V H. And in Hebrew, it's a Yud Hey Vav Hey. By the way, that that's sort of a Y that which is the Hebrew for Y H V H. So how long have you been studying uh, the Kabbalah? Uh, at least for 30 years, probably. Wow. You know, but uh, the, the, um, uh, the Kabbalah is a really a galactic um, blueprint for uh, the creation of worlds, not just this world, but other worlds. And the Acturians are very much aware of the uh, Tree of Life and uh, how the tree of life applies to planets. And uh, the, the tree of life, as I uh, describe it, has 10 spheres. And th these spheres are uh, um, opposite each other. Uh, some of them are, are uh, in configurations of opposite. Uh, uh, so for example, one side is compassion and loving kindness, and another side uh, is uh, um, uh, justice uh, or uh, punishment and judgment. And the, uh, when I look at those two, I, I use that as an example in the, uh, in the Acturian teachings because if you look at a planet, yeah, if you look at a planet, uh, if the, the planet is too uh, liberal, too free, uh, and people do whatever they want, then things get out of control and, and out of balance. And so it, you have to have uh, be tempered with balance. So if you go back up to the top, uh, right there, okay, right there, stop right there. Okay, so one side, uh, a little bit higher up, please. Uh, you have one side is loving kindness, and the other side is strength, discipline, and judgment. Okay. So right now, uh, the Acturians evaluate our planet and say that we, uh, the planet, we've been taking advantage of the planet. We have been uh, allowing too much freedom. People have been able to do whatever they want. You know, if you want to go into a mountain and dig up the mountain, go, you can do that. If you wanted to pollute the ocean, uh, dump sewage, you can do that. In other words, th that uh, there was... Uh, compassion for whatever you want to do. But after a while, the planet, got, uh, as we now see, is out of balance and the planet will have restriction and judgment on the planet, which will cause a great deal of upheaval to force people to uh, pay more attention and to be more disciplined. Yeah, and then isn't that what we're learning from the indigenous ones and the Arcturian and with your planetary healing? Exactly. Yeah, we're learning the planetary healing. And, and a lot of uh, times people are saying, well, we're at the end times because we're, uh, the planet is going to go through judgment. You know, uh, mm -hmm. and what, what they're really saying is that this planet is out of balance and it's out of balance. And so we have to be more disciplined and restrictive. You can't have total uh, understanding. Now, the other example I, I use when just trying to describe these two features that are described in the Tree of Life is you can't. Sometimes compassion is not healing. If you have a terrorist 
you, you know, even though the terrorists may have, uh, you know, go goals that might be uh, somewhat good, uh, it, it the the method is uh, evil, you know, ca causing death and destruction. So understanding uh, is not going to stop a, a terrorist. You have to be uh, restrictive. You have to use judgment. You have to use discipline to make sure that they stay in control. And that, that's what's happening now on this planet. We we are being uh, in a, a period of time where we get, uh, are going to be experiencing a lot of judgment and discipline because we, we have had too much freedom and uh, the freedom has been misused. Very interesting. And then I see in the heart there, you have the Sananda, which is Jeshua, Balanced Harmony, Sacred Messiah Energy. Right. right. So... Uh, the in the tree of life, the center uh, is the only place where all the other spheres are interacting with the center. And uh, the tree of life is saying that what now this tree of life is saying that for planetary healing, mm -hmm. there are certain things that we need. We need to bring a balance in with compassion. But we also, we need a messianic intervention because things are so far out of balance that uh, logically, it's not going to pull back together. I mean, no, 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 I it's, exactly. it's, it's, it's so far out of balance uh, that uh, it doesn't look like it's going to be saved. However, uh, in the concept of the messianic intervention, an external force such as represented by Jesus uh, and, and Sananda, incidentally, Sananda is uh, Jesus' name as a galactic being because Jesus is known throughout the galaxy. He's not just known in, in, in the uh, planet Earth, but he, he has been on other planets. And in fact, he's said he's received better receptions on, uh, on other planets than he has on the earth. He didn't really have a great reception on the earth. I don't know, maybe it was in alignment with what his goals were, but he certainly, uh, for example, he has been on the Pleiades and uh, he, he was uh, not crucified on the Pleiades as the way he was crucified here. So, but the Pleiades are coming in from the fifth dimension. So, yeah. Uh, in that sense, maybe, um, you know, the crucifixion here was to understand the resurrection body within, maybe. Like, that's, I mean, that's true. Yeah, that's true. But it's still, uh, it was a lot of work still. <laughs> there's a lot of work in it. The misunderstanding of all the different, not that I want to talk politics or religion, but I like spirituality. So I accept all kinds of you know, yeah. spiritual understanding so we can understand how to work and live in this avatar. And I think that that was taken definitely out of uh, control. So now I feel like the younger people, they don't even, you know, we are like hungry for this kind of information that you can share so that we can mm -hmm. work with this avatar of a body and realize ourselves, you know. Right. Now, and, uh, this, tree, this tree of life also applies to personal healing. Yes. Because uh, for example, uh, a lot of people are overly judgmental of their self. Yeah, it's terrible. And, what is that, a program or something? Well, it, it, it comes from, uh, yeah, you're right, absolutely right. It comes from a program, uh, overly restrictive parents, for example. Uh, and I think that Freud called it the superego, which is the, the, the parenting self was overly critical. And uh, if you're overly critical, you can't grow. But at the same time, if you have no self-criticism, that's not good either. It, 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 the whole point of the tree of life is that you have to be in balance. Balance, yeah. So, yeah, fantastic. I'd love to learn more about that, yeah. uh, the tree of life. I've done some classes on it. Uh, you know, I've tried to really read about it. <laughs> but it's a lot. It's no, a lot. It's never really, it's, I, I find it that it's very difficult to find good explanations of it. So, exactly. So for example, the, 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 the top two, uh, not the very top, are uh, the um, 
understanding and wisdom. Yes. The very top. Okay. Well, you can understand that, uh, number two and number three, you can understand as the right brain and the left brain. Everybody yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So instead of trying to figure out all these other things, uh, well, wisdom uh, is is really uh, tied in closely with intuition, and understanding is tied uh, really closely with knowledge. And and so, uh, okay, so the right brain and the left brain, people understand that now. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just like each sphere has a spirit guide. And uh, the, the the problem is that the spirit guides in the ancient Kabbalistic literature were the patriarchs. Uh, Abraham, Isaac, Moses, Joseph, <clears throat> uh, King David, and the Acturians uh, told me that we needed to update them to modern spirit guides so that they uh, can be more easily understood uh, by the modern New Age culture, because the modern New Age people aren't that much into the uh, patriarchs of the Old Testament. No, I don't think so, but we understand Metatron love yeah. that vibration very mm, powerful and strong yeah. and then archangel michael mm. um you know about the other one if you look at uh, number uh, nine yeah <clears throat> number nine is the creation of sacred places and planetary cities of light mm. so uh and it's uh mary uh her hebrew name uh, mary's hebrew name was miriam mm -hmm. Uh, and this is Mother Mary from the, the uh, uh, New Testament. But what, what they're saying is that we do, uh, are, uh, do not have enough sacred places on the planet. We need more sacred places. We need to protect more places on the planet. In order for this planet to come back into balance. Okay, that's a good information. What about creating uh, like a sacred place? Um, you know, I, I always think that if you use your own personal body and your personal lifestyle, then you can add that to the planetary lifestyle. So if you have sacred place in your home, if you have a dedicated area or room for meditation or you bring in your sacred object. Correct, correct. You're absolutely yeah. correct. Then yes. it will be easier to see those sacred places around us as well. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. yeah. Or the, uh, the other side, uh, from the other end also, when you go to a sacred place, like you weren't to uh, the sublime point in the Grand Canyon, that place, you know, initiated you vastly, and then you brought that home and maybe wanted to replicate yeah. Think similar can, you, can you go down to the bottom of the tree like yeah. that? Thing I wanna, and then I'm going to have to stop here because it's yeah. almost, it's okay. So the, now there are ten spheres, but the um, Octarians added a new sphere to the tree of life. Oh, uh, Serra da Bacaina. That's a uh, sacred uh, national forest in Brazil. <clears throat> oh wow! Which I visited. Uh, and we, we uh, downloaded and made it a sacred area, a more sacred area. But if you look at those two, uh, the, the uh, idea is that the fifth dimension, the higher realm, is now interacting with the third dimension. Oh, this whole thing. I got it. Because in the traditional uh, 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 Jewish tree of life, there is not an interaction on the bottom. There's just number 10. That's it. But on this one... It's, it's demonstrating that now, at this time on the planet Earth, the fifth dimension is beginning to interact more with the third dimension. And we need to take advantage of this interaction for our spiritual development. Amazing. And um, so tell me three ways of doing that. Joining well, you in planetary healing. Well, the first is to connecting, connecting with the Ascended Masters. Mm -hmm. uh, who are in the fifth dimension uh and then the, uh, another method is to uh uh you know the thought project uh or visit them or visit uh the higher realms and uh there there is uh uh kabbalistic exercises to go to the higher realms it, it's called the merkava travel you might have heard of the word merkava yes um, yeah merkava is the hebrew word for chariot 
in the Merkava travel is where you uh, uh, thought project yourself to a higher realm. In Kabbalah, it's called the heavenly palaces. So you, you uh, and, and then the third thing is that you bring back down the light and energy from the fifth dimension into the third dimension. Mm. Great. And then that's brilliant. And who is this last uh, ascended master? Vaiwamas. Okay. So Vaiwamas is a soul psychologist that I channel. And uh, he, so he helped develop, and I have one book to, totally devoted to soul psychology. It's called Fifth Dimensional Soul Psychology. And it's based on my my work as a, uh, a, a, a soul therapist uh, and uh, working with people in their past life therapy, uh, working and trying to understand uh, how problems from this lifetime came from the past life, and then also uh, doing uh, life between life therapy or other techniques in other words, when you look at problems you're having in this lifetime, you then say in soul psychology, what is my soul lesson that I'm supposed to learn from this problem? Mm. Which is not easy because especially if you're suffering <laughs> and having <Yeah. laughs> a you know, problem, you, know, you, you say, well, this is part of my soul lesson. Nobody wants to hear that. You just want to get better, right? But but uh, they're usually, and almost all the time, is there's some kind of soul lesson. So, okay, it was great talking to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your time.